Hello folks, today I'm going to do a video on the clutch adjustments for the Seberg Selectomatic 100 machines that were used principally in the 50s. So, to start, I have basically a stripped down mechanism here that I got from a buddy of mine, missing of course the motor and the frog, but I got this specifically to be able to show some videos about some adjustments. And of course we're also looking at the machine from the back with the record magazine and the pin bank removed. So here we have the clutch assembly and you've got the worm, the clutch itself, and the sprocket. So before we talk more about clutch adjustments, there are many other videos which actually detail the clutch being taken apart and shown how to lubricate it on YouTube, so I don't need to repeat that here, except that before you attempt any adjustments to the clutch, you need to make sure that the clutch is freely moving and there's no binds. But what I wanted to show you here before I started to actually do the clutch adjustments is to outline that here we have the clutch in the scan position. And in the scan position what you can see here is the clutch, the sprocket, the sprocket pin, and the drive pin. And because the clutch is in its scan position, the clutch is fully down with the drive pin on top of the sprocket pin, which then allows the turning of the turntable to be transmitted to the uh, sprocket, which then moves the mechanism. I wanted to show this here because I have to move the camera to show some other things. So let's go ahead, though, and put the, and put the mechanism into the play position by lifting up on the shifting lever. So let me go ahead, and you can see the clutch lifted off of the drive pin. The clutch then moves into the play position as it drops into the notch, which it will do in a second here. You can see that here. And now the machine is in the play position. And in this position, you can see that the clutch is up, that the clutch is free from the sprocket and engaged with the worm pin here, but I'm going to have to show that from a different angle later. So let's go ahead and get started on clutch adjustments. First of all, the clutch adjustment is well detailed in the manuals and consists of four elements, clutch one, two, three, and four. Clutch one adjustment is done from the other side of the machine that we're looking at, and I will cover that at a different time. So the clutch adjustments start with the machine in the scan position. So I'll go ahead and flip up the shifting lever, move the turntable, so I can put the clutch into the scan position. You can see here that the cam is moving. and that the clutch shifting lever and the roller will drop into the scan notch there and then the machine will start to scan. Now to make further adjustments I'm going to go ahead and move the camera a bit and take it up down and point it down so you can see the sprocket here. So after clutch one is done, which was, I said we'll talk about later, we've got three adjustment screws for the remainder of the clutch adjustments. Whoops, sorry. Clutch two, clutch three, and clutch four. These must be done in order. Clutch two, clutch three, and clutch four. And the purposes of the clutch adjustment is to bring the detent arm and roller into the proper relationship with the sprocket and to bring the clutch into proper relationship with the worm pin and more about that when we get on. So where do we start? We start with the machine in scan mode and in scan mode then you start with the second clutch adjustment. I've backed out the screws like you're supposed to and explains that you back them all out before you start this process 
and normally you would do this process with the machine in the K10 position because in the K10 position one can see the back of the clutch um, past the record racks but of course I got the record rack off here so one can see it so okay so here we go we start with clutch 2 the purpose of the clutch 2 position is to bring the detent arm and roller into proper relationship with the sprocket the way you do that is you first manually press down the detent lever and you move the mechanism until you find the high point of the detent roller on a sprocket tooth. So you go back and forth until you find the high point where the, where the detent roller is on the sprocket tooth. And there it is, that's the high point. Once you have found the high point, you begin to tighten or, 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 or bring in the adjustment screw until all of the free movement is taken out of the detent arm. So we just start to back in the screw until there's no until there's no movement. Whoops, sorry guys. You can tell I'm pressing in and out until all the movement is done. A little bit more to go. A little bit more to go. There we go. All the movement is essentially gone at this point. From this point then, one goes ahead and backs out this screw two full turns. One half, one, one and a half, and two. At this point now, um, the detent arm and roller should clear the sprocket teeth. At this point, you can tighten down the nut, the lock nut, and you're good to go to clutch three. Clutch three is done with the mechanism in the play position. So you reach forward, activate the shifting lever, go ahead, and bring the mechanism into the play position. I'm just moving the turntable, and you can see the play notch coming up here and you go until the shifting lever and roller drops into the notch fully and now you are in the play position you make sure it's down and we're good to go now I'm going to say here that the manual does describe that in both of these positions you must make sure that the cam is fully engaged up or down and the pictures demonstrate that quite well I, and it's hard to get an angle here to see that at this point then you've adjusted clutch two and you're moving on to clutch three clutch three at this point exists to remove rotational play so you can see that when I move the mechanism left to right, the roller allows the sprocket to move because it's fitting in between the two sprocket teeth. The intent now of clutch three is to take all that rotation out. So at this point, we start to advance clutch three, checking for rotational motion until the rotational motion essentially ceases to be. A little bit more to go. There we go. Now you don't want to take all motion out because there must be some slop, if you will, for the mechanism. But at this point in time, there's no rotation of note in the sprocket. At this point, this adjustment is done. You go ahead and tighten down the lock nut. Okay. At this point, then, it is time to adjust the clearance of the clutch from the worm pin on the top. All right, so here's the worm. The worm pin is there. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is lower the camera, and hopefully I'll be able to get a good shot of this. But I'm going to lower the camera, raise the angle up, 
so you can actually see the worm pin. So let me see if I can get a better shot here. Okay, so I'm going to grab a flashlight and I'll show you the worm pin. You can see it basically there. Now let me go ahead and grab my screwdriver. It's right here. That's the worm pin. The purpose then of clutch four, let me move it around here so you can see it. The purpose here then for clutch four is to bring the distance between the clutch and the worm pin into the right relationship and that distance is 1 64th of an inch. So at this point we've adjusted clutch 2, clutch 3, and now we're going to adjust clutch 4 which will raise the clutch into the proper relationship with the worm pin. So there you go, it starts to rise and you can see and you just basically raise the clutch until it's 1 64th of an inch. The manual talks about markings. I don't see them. I just grab a feeler gauge to get it right. Once you're at 1 64th of an inch, go ahead, lock down your, your locking screws, and at this point in time, the clutch should be free um, to function normally. Okay, the manual also talks about checking to make sure there's no binding uh, in the mechanism. And the way you do that is by um, checking the tone arm and in the relationship of how the tone arm and the brake moves. It talks about doing that by hand. I have trouble doing that, but I can show that in a different video. All right, so at this point, I think the, the major three clutch adjustments are done. And uh, that's about it. All right, folks. Thanks. Bye.